A reading from God's Word out of the book of Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians. Preserved blameless. In verse 23 of chapter 5. Amazing statement God has made to us. Preserve blameless. You ever think of yourself like that? To be blameless? You know, there's an accusation after accusation from the evil one against Christians. He watched our whole lives. And he's accused us our whole lives. And sometimes we fall into situations and we think, wow, I paid for what I did wrong. It happened to me. But that's not the way God wants it. God wants to erase all our debt and throw it into the deepest sea. And he has a way to do it through the power of the blood and through forgiveness. When you're a forgiving person and you're convicted to your heart, God is a merciful God. He's not replicating sin. It's the evil one that's replicating sin, not our God. Our God is holy. He's true. He loves us. Let's take a look at what will happen viciously in the days we live in out of Matthew 24. I'm just going to give you a brief. What will be the sign of your coming, Lord, in the end of the age? He asked them. The apostles asked them that question. They were curious. God was talking about it like it was happening right now. He was feeling it. Jesus, you know, never doubt that Jesus isn't in your tomorrow. He was in everything that's happening in the day we live in. When 7 billion people, 6 to 7 billion people would inhabit this earth, he would, he's there. He was there and he's talking like he was there to the apostles. And listen what he said. He says there'll be wars and rumors of wars. And doesn't that sound different? Because that's almost like a rumor of a war on the other side of the world. How could, the, how could Israel hear about that? You know what I mean? It's not like we didn't have radio. They didn't have radio. We have radio. But he's saying to them, wars and rumors of wars. There'll be rumors coming from the other parts of the world. This is a global thing the Lord's talking about. And so they didn't realize the magnitude of what he was saying. Nation against nation. You know, if you were a person, a little fisherman in Galilee, and you knew about Israel and you knew about the surrounding nations around you, nation against nation would mean, well, you know, it's our neighbors don't like us, you know. They didn't have the magnitude of how many nations there would be in the world, that there would be a united nations and nations would be against nations. They didn't think about it. And kingdom against kingdom. You see, they didn't know about nations not having kings. Kingdom against kingdom is a nation that has a king, like Saudi Arabia. Nation against nation would be the United States against China. Kingdom against kingdom would be somebody who had a king against another nation who had a king. All discernible, if you're looking for details of how big the Lord was speaking to his apostles. He was speaking way over their heads and they were seeing it through their vision of what they were living right there. There'd be famines and earthquakes in various places. These are the beginnings of birth pains. And of course, we know that earthquakes are increasing. You don't have to be a, an educated scientist to know earthquakes are increasing all the time. Of course, the climate has, it gets the blame for everything. I'm surprised they didn't blame the coronavirus on the climate. But it gets the blame for everything. The reality is the earth's too big for us to change the climate. That's what I believe. But everybody has their own objective. Do I believe that we should be a blessing to our planet? And that we should, you know, be... Diligent when it comes to being good to the planet? Absolutely. But don't kill the people to do it. Don't starve them to do it. Don't leave them without livelihood. Don't take their babies in the womb. 
Don't try to make a place for yourself in this big planet. When God made this planet big enough to make it to the judgment of when he returns. And incidentally, if you're a planet lover, um, I love the planet, but I love God more. I love the planet, but I love the people more. I love the planet. But I love animals more than I love the planet. And how do I know what I'm talking about? Because when the judgment comes, the planet's going to be burned up. The atmosphere in the earth. Because it's going to be made the way from the angels of God to prepare this planet to receive the kingdom of God. And this planet is so impure, so unable to receive God, it's going to need the fire of God. First the fire of man will fall on this planet. Then the fire of God will fall on this planet. And this planet will be completely redone. The elements will be burned up. So don't make a God out of the planet. If you are, your God's going to be burned up. These are the beginning of birth pains. Birth pains for what? When Christ comes back, the kingdom is going to be born in this earth. And God's people are going to be the heirs of that kingdom. God is giving birth to a people. The sons of God will come forth. He says, the whole, you know what the planet's doing right now? It's yearning for the sons of God. It's not choking because of the ozone. It's yearning for the sons of God. It's having birth pains. The hurricanes are birth pains. The tornadoes are birth pains. The earthquakes are birth pains. What's happening in the winds is birth pains. The earth is getting ready to give birth. Out of the earth comes this seed that God will accept. When the earth goes into its final stages of birth pains, it'll be called Armageddon. When all the impurity of man fails and God's kingdom bursts into this world, the birth pains. He says, earthquakes in various places, beginning of birth pains. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Who endures to the end? The only person that endures to the end is the one who has real faith. Real faith cannot be quenched. It will endure to the end. How do you know if you're born again? Your faith can't be stopped. You're going to believe in Christ no matter what happens. That's how you know you're born again. And then after that, after this, it says the good news will be proclaimed then the end will come. You see what's happening right now? Never before did we have satellites to send a gospel around the world. Programming, going around the world. Missionaries, going around the world. Mega churches that are sending missionaries around the world. Do you think these pastors are able to pastor 100,000 people or 10 million or 5 million people? The answer is no. God sent them people there because he wants to use them. There's pastors that, that pastor churches of 100 people that have more skills than some of these guys, but they were picked by God to be the pastor of that church. And some of them are great administrators. And we're thankful to God when they can preach too. If you're preaching cotton candy, you're not that good of a preacher. In... In August of 2020, there was a confirmation of the Abrahamic Covenant. In Israel, the Arab Emirates made a peace treaty. The great harvest is beginning. The Jews, the Arabs, and the Christians are now trying to shake hands. And it's going to do two things. On one side, there will be great evil and war. And on the other side, doors will open for the gospel. And the gospel will rush into those nations. And one of the things I'm happy when I hear the news of it is Iran. There's a great revival in Iran. Christians, they're being saved by the millions in Iran. And there's an underground church in China. I don't, we don't know what's going on there now, but we know millions upon millions were being saved at one time in China. God, the, the gospel is going as he said, to the four corners of the earth, 
four corners meeting the four mountain ranges as far as you can look. How does pestilence affect us? We just had a coronavirus. They, the scientists say that pestilence, a, a virus is not a living thing. If it's not a living thing, if it's some kind of a crop of chemicals that leach, then it's a dead living thing. You know, it's amazing how, you know, I mean, you could use the word zombie for a, for a virus. It's a zombie cell. It's not a real cell. It can't reproduce. Isn't that amazing how it's like the devil's nature? The devil can't reproduce either. Of course, there's Christians that I, out there think he can, you know. I wonder how many angels he made lately. I wonder how many, people, how many women he gave uh, got pregnant lately. That's craziness. He can't reproduce. He's dead. His spirit's dead. He's not God. He can't reproduce one cell. He can't create a cell. Human beings might be able to close some, clone something, but they can't make anything new. Every creature has its own genetics, and that's it. God made it, uniquely fashioned by his workmanship. The devil's like a virus, and the viruses came from him. It's his spirit, the spirit of death, the spirit of Abaddon. It's in the bottomless pit. A bottomless pit means... Endless hate that doesn't stop. Endless darkness that doesn't stop. A virus is as the spirit of the evil one. A leech. Isn't the evil one a leech? How he gets close to a young girl and a young guy to ruin their lives. How he gets close to a person's mind a young person's mind, and has them cut theirself or hate theirself, a lifeless spirit in their thoughts. It's a diseased thought that wants to kill itself. A healthy thought wants to reproduce. A healthy thought comes from life. God is life. It's the word of life, the scripture says. Jesus Christ is the word of life. And when his thoughts are in your mind, you want to live. A man meets a young girl, and I can, I'm not that old that I can't remember when I married my wife. The dreams of what would have children would live in a nice place, would have nice family gatherings, would go on vacation. Life, 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 life. Hope, life. Healthy thoughts are thoughts of life. The Word of God is life. A virus is death. They say it's not a living thing. Well, it looks like one because it sucked the life out of the host that it's in. And eventually we'll kill that host if it's not stopped. It's a leech. How someone can follow the devil, how someone can believe in witchcraft, how someone can walk a road that says there's great power in this stuff. Didn't you ever see Harry Potter flying a broom? I got news for you. His broom don't know where it's going. And neither does Abaddon know it's going to be worse than a bottomless pit for him. The scripture says when Jesus returns, he'll be thrown in hell. Will be thrown and the angels in it will be thrown into the lake of fire. And I don't know why the lake of fire is worse than hell, but it is. Do you know there's going to come a time that there won't be no more hell? Because it says eternal hell. That's the lake of fire. The devil and his angels will be thrown into the lake of fire. And the devil will be kept in prison in the bottomless pit until a thousand years to God's white room throne judgment. I don't want to be questioned by Jesus at that judgment to you. I want my slate clean. I want what this scripture says right here. I want what it says. Reserved blameless. <laughs> I'd love to have a cheap t-shirt like that. 
reserved and preserved blameless. Write it on me, Jesus. That's where I'm going. That's what I want to do. When I wake up in the morning, I want to put behind me all the darkness because the darkness is fading away and the light is getting brighter. It might not seem like that, but more darkness is behind the human race than in front of it right now than ever was. Because God is shoveling it on down, shoveling it into hell, shoveling and exposing more of it. And the darkest darknesses are being exposed now. And swiftly, it'll be dealt with by the judgment of God. Do you want to be preserved blameless? Are you going to walk with God into the light? Do you want that? Jesus provided you for it. Why would we slight the Son of God? He went through a merciless death and proclaimed mercy on us. The mercilessness of mankind fell on the body of Jesus. And his thoughts were so pure, so alive. You see, there was no sin in him, no death in him. He couldn't think, I want to kill them all. He couldn't think, I hate them all. He couldn't think, I don't have no use for none of them. He couldn't think, down with them, up with me. He couldn't think none of that. Because he's the Lamb of God, the pure Lamb of God. And his thoughts are fully alive. He's the one that taught the apostles. Think on things lovely. Think on things pure. Think on things true. You know what's true today? Jesus Christ loves you just like you are. You know what's true today? He can see the good in you. And it's so much brighter than the bad. You know what's true today? When he looks at you. He sees his child who he's longing to be with again. How long would it take that I'll be with you? How long would it take that in heaven I could put my arms around you and you could kiss me on the cheek and touch my hair and see my wounds and hear my voice and see my face? Sometimes we think of the face of Jesus Christ like being Patton <laughs> leading a tank army. And indeed, he's going to have fire and judgment. But make no mistake about it. He had gladness above his fellows. There's a joy in Jesus that's so contagious. When he looks at you, the brightness of his eyes lift up your thoughts and give your heart courage. When you feel his strength, you know no enemy can conquer you because he's with you. He's the loving God. His loving kindness is greater than life because his life was given so that we could have his loving kindness. Thoughts of life coming through his love. He was put to the death on a cross and he has thoughts of life for us. What do you think about this son over here? Oh, I'd like to build him a house in heaven. I'd like to run a fountain right up to his doorstep. I'd like to make the birds chirp and the flowers sing when he looks over the balcony. I'd like to... Him to feel my love coming from the throne above. I like him to, him to swim in the river in heaven and have all the past just wash away. All the memory just wash away. I'd like to see him united with his loved ones and those I created to love him. Which are more than he could count and he'll find more when he gets there. I'd like to have him pick a flower and realize that another flower has replaced it. That he can never lose anything. I'd like to have him realize even before he gets there, he's preserved blameless. Oh, let's, 
let's go to God's cross and let's say to God, I don't want to meditate on how dark my life has been anymore. I want that spell to be broken that belongs to the earth. It don't belong to me. I'm not going to lie and say I didn't fail God, I didn't sin, but I'm not going to lie and say that sin belongs to me anymore. There's no more guilt that belongs to me. In fact, I think the devil should eat it. I'm God's child. I'm going to walk with him forever. He'll show me around heaven. And I'm, when I'm not beside him, he'll send an angel to remind me he loves me. And those that lost mates, they'll see them again. And they'll have a burning love that will be greater than anything they ever, that ever existed when they were on earth. And they'll have the beauty of sanctuary in the beautiful home God gives them. Oh, there's viruses. It's the spirit of the devil. It's not alive, but it has life in it because it's a leech. We don't want anything to do with leeches, do we? Because a leech cannot exist without us and it's better if a leech don't exist. When the devil's hordes are in hell there will not be any more life to leech off of there. They're leeching on life on earth. Let our mission be, oh children of God, don't let anybody leech on you. God is a living God. Don't let anything leech on you. Don't let drug habits leech on you. Don't let perversion leech on you. Don't let pornography leech on you. Don't let alcohol leech on you. Don't let bitter thoughts and unforgiveness leech on you. Don't let jealousy leech on you. All the nature of Satan. Oh, we bind him. We bind him. Oh, that I could just wrap my arms around the ankles of Jesus and kiss his feet and say, thank you, God, that you're not on that cross. Thank you. And by the way, Lord, by the way, thank you for what you did. And Lord, I'm not deserving of it, but I want you to have the benefit of it. I'm going to live a life to make Satan cringe when he thinks about me because his dead thoughts can't understand me. He's dead. He's a zombie. And we are sons of God. He is a leech. The pandemic was a leech and is a leech. It didn't come from God. It was prophesied by his son because he said evil would come make no mistake about it and the antichrist would come there must be a stirring in hell over a man that will walk the earth full of sin and the perfection of its ways but oh praise God we're going to see him shrink and be broken we're going to see him run from God like a rabbit running from a lion. We're going to see his hordes defeated. And they're going to say, was that the man? Was that the man that persecuted the nations? I'm amazed at how insignificant he is. And I'm in awe at how great the name of Jesus is. Would you like to know him? This is your opportunity. Ask him to come into your heart and live with you. He promised he would if you would ask. 
He'll keep up his part of it. You don't have to worry about him being faithful. You worry about you being faithful. Accept him into your heart as your Lord and Savior. He died on the cross for your sins. Ask him to wash you with his blood and believe that he rose from the dead, that he is God's only begotten son, and you shall be saved because he loves you. Amen.